Don't know what it is about Kentucky. Could be in the water. I'm Terry Comer, uh, formerly from Pound, Virginia, in Wise County, and I found out about Shelby Anna when I would travel from from Wise County over the Pound Gap uh, to check out Kentucky. What a wonderful place. And at the top of the Pound Gap, right there at the uh, border between Wise County and Letcher County, there was a sign. It must have been 30 years ago or so, and it said Shelby Anna. So, wow, what a pretty name, Shelby Anna. The song has four daughters in it. They're not my daughters, but they're girls. And the song is about a a real capable young man from eastern Kentucky who travels around the country and uh, he's kind of a rambling gambling kind of guy you know how it is in the bluegrass world and he has a girl in uh, Reno that wants him wants him to settle down with her and she's got a lot of compelling reasons to do that and another girlfriend in Houston and she wants him to stay there because her daddy's because she, she loves him and, and then another uh, another one from Montana, who's a uh, banjo-picking redhead, <laughs> and, and he, she wants him to stay in another dusty blonde in Colorado, has a cattle on the ranch and swimming pool, and all these all these ladies just have every reason to make a Kentucky boy want to stay there and not come back. But this whole song is about the the lure of Kentucky. My favorite part. It's, it's not the greenery and the hills around me or the beautiful sky, although I love it. It's the people. The most beautiful thing are the people. The ones that, that are from, from here and have a connection family-wise to the reunion. And it, it tells everything about family. Folks may move away and get jobs in other places but because of the economy and time and tide. That's the way the world is now. But they always come back. They, as we said in Wise County, uh, yeah, they're living off in uh, Lexington now, but they'll be back. And sure enough, you'd look up and they'd be back. <laughs> so nobody ever really left the coal fields or left the mountains. It's always home. Reunions are for looking back at the memories that we built uh, during our childhood and raising our families and in a railroad family here at Shelby. And we realize that as a committee, and so there won't be much, be no speeches, no, not a lot of talking going on. We know that you all want to reminisce and, and eat, so we'll, we want to, we certainly want to take enough time to honor the people we're going to honor, and of course the purpose of the railroad reunion, as it has been for a number of years, is to help children of railroaders uh, obtain a college education. And we have been blessed to have been able and been blessed to have Bill Clark and Pam in the memory of George Charles Clark uh, to participate with us at the Shelby Union to provide to the children of railroaders uh, in this area, in the CNO, uh, Chessie, CSX uh, area. And this year we, we had eight applicants and Virgil will, Virgil will take over, he's the chairman of the committee that on the scholarship committee. So it is, uh, we've been able to give thousands of dollars so far through this reunion to young people uh, to further their education. So the purpose of that is to bring the Shelby people together and to start this reunion. Those who started the reunion, we have uh, Audie Ratliff and Gene here today, but Hargis couldn't be with us because he had another commitment, but uh, Hargis Harris, Clayton Moore and Ruth, uh, they're the original ones who started this reunion, and it was in the Iceland area. I was blessed to take my mother to Iceland many, many times. Uh, um, I was there, many of, many of you here, uh, Richard and Lorraine and Virgil and Ann, and on and on, uh, Ruth and Ruby and the families, we was able to be to, down to, to Iceland for, I think, Audie, it was eight years, if I remember, and then uh, one year they said, why don't you give us a break and have it up Shelby one year? Well, we did. And we, we, we had the largest crowd that they would had since they started the union, uh, the reunion, and Audie, we couldn't get you to take it back. So it's, uh, and as usual, when you, when you, uh, when you have something like this, 
There are just a, there are a lot of people that's concerned and wants to wants to do it, but not a lot of people done the work. So it's been a, it's it's been a job, and of course with my I'm I'm very busy, as most of you all know now, and I don't even get to give the time that I used to to it. But uh, you've had Jerry Sloan and Richard and and. And today you will hear about people who stood by us and were here when they was needed, attended all the meetings we had, and so it's it's a great it's it's great to have this opportunity to be here, and to thank the Grace Baptist Church for the what they've done for us. We started out as, as you all remember at the Methodist Church. We moved out to the Church of Christ. Both of them we we. The Methodist wasn't large enough, and then we got out to the other church and had parking. So the Grace Baptist has been so gracious. Their board and their pastors have been so, and their members have been so gracious to us. And what a panoramic view it is to walk out to that fence over here and look over at, at to what we know as the Shelby Yard, the R.H. Ratliff Cemetery. It's just a, a picturesque uh, uh, when you look across through there. So today's a day of memory. Today is the day that we, we memorialize and, uh, some people and honor others who are still with us. But, uh, but today, the first thing we want to do is, is, is have Andrew, Andrew Smith, the pastor of the Grace Baptist Church, to come and, and open these ceremonies and, and welcome us here. Andrew, you all have been so nice to us and we certainly, certainly appreciate it. And, and he told me before that he appreciated the chocolate cake that was left for him in spite too. So, so come on up. Well, on behalf of Grace Baptist Church, we do want to welcome all of you. And uh, this is a good memory for me because if you remember last year uh, at your reunion, that was about a week after I moved here with my family. And, uh, and so I've been here for just a little over a year, and we, we love the community. We love the people at Grace Baptist Church. They're just the sweetest people in the world. And, and it's been a, a great privilege to get to know Judge Rutherford and his family and just all the people who, who, are, who make this reunion possible. Uh, just a, yesterday, some of the men were here at the church uh, making preparations, setting tents up, setting things up. I was having some conversations with them, and they started reminiscing about the railroad and started telling me stories about the railroad and about the years they worked on the railroad. And I'm a history guy, so I really eat that up. And so I just started asking a lot of questions and, and just hearing a lot of stories. And, you know, one of the, a couple of things my dad taught me growing up that I've never forgotten. One of them is to work hard. And when I hear stories about those that worked on the railroad, uh, I think hard work and just the diligence and the dedication that it took and the long hours and the, and the labor and everything that was involved with that. And uh, the second thing that my dad taught me was to be proud of where you're from. And those two things my dad taught me and I've tried to stick by those two principles my whole life. To work hard and never forget where you're from, be proud of where you're from. And really, if you think about it, that's what you guys are doing today, isn't it? You're, you're reminiscing about all the memories of some of your husbands who worked on the railroad, and then those of you who have worked on the railroad, and, and all the hard work and all the hard labor that went into that, and then just being proud of where, where you're from, you know, proud of this area, Shelbyana, and proud of, uh, you know, the heritage uh, that... Uh, that, that trains have in your community. And, uh, and so uh, I, I want to open our, our ceremonies uh, today in prayer, if you will allow me to do that. Um, but before I do that, I want to read just a couple of verses from the book of Galatians chapter 4. Because as I was talking with the fellas yesterday who were, who were working and uh, working hard to uh, make this possible, um, I thought about life in general. And one of the psalms that I read, usually at every funeral that I do, is taken from Psalm 90 and verse 10, which says this, As for the days of our life, they contain 70 years, or if due to strength, 80 years, yet their pride is but labor and sorrow, for soon it is gone and we fly away. And I'm struck by the, the message in that verse, which is that, you know, life is good. There are blessings in life, and the grace of God is something we all experience. But at the end of the day, life has a lot of labor and a lot of sorrow. And most things we do in life take hard work, and they, and they take sweat. 
But I'm thankful today, and I want to just communicate something to you today, and that is we might work for everything in life that we get, but there's one thing we can't work for, and that is our salvation, which is found in the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm thankful for that. And in Galatians 4, verse 4, you're familiar with these verses, I'm sure. The Apostle Paul says this, When the fullness of the time came, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, so that he might redeem those who are under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. And so if I could tell you anything today, I want to tell you what Grace Baptist Church is about, and that is about the Lord Jesus Christ. And I am so thankful that Jesus Christ obeyed the law perfectly for me so that I don't have to do it. And if I just place my faith in Him and believe in Him, He'll give me the gift of eternal life. And so we work for everything in life, don't we? But one thing we don't work for is our salvation. And I am so thankful for that. And so we just want to welcome you here. We want to welcome you to use our facilities as you wish. Um, there are a couple of restrooms out in the lobby there, men's and women's. There's a couple of restrooms back here. On this side, there's a ladies' room. On this side, there's a men's room. And just know that as Grace Baptist Church, we want you to use our building. And, and doing that, we're trying to demonstrate the love of the Lord Jesus Christ to you. So let's, uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer and just ask His blessing uh, on, on everything that you guys do today. And I'm sure that He'll be with you and He'll bless you. Okay? Our gracious Heavenly Father, we come before you this day, this beautiful day. And Lord, even as we stand outside and look at your beautiful creation, Lord, we are reminded of your handiwork. We are reminded that all good things come from you, that even the beautiful scenery outside, as the judge was speaking about, and the sunshine and the mountains, Lord, this is, this is all things that you have created, and you have created them for our good and for your glory, and we are so thankful for that. Father, we're also thankful, Lord, uh, just for all the the people who worked so hard to make this reunion possible. We're thankful that, um, that uh, you have, have instilled in these people uh, some very important principles. Number one, the principle of hard work. And number two, the principle of being proud of where they're from. And both of those things, they're really celebrating this day, Lord, as they, they come together and reminisce about old stories and, and uh, fellowship with one another and, and renew relationships. And so, Lord, I ask that your blessing may be upon these, these folks. Lord, and, and most of all, Lord, I pray, praise you, Lord, that we don't have to work for our salvation. Lord, that in Jesus Christ, uh, salvation is a free gift, and that all you ask us to do is place faith in your Son and to repent of our sins, and we can be given that gift of eternal life. So we thank you for that, and today is certainly a day to celebrate, and it's, it's a cause of celebration. And so have your blessing on these dear folks and everything that they take part of. May your spirit be with them. May your grace be with them. May your strength be with them, and just bless their time. We pray and ask for all of these things, and we give you the glory. We pray these things in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Virgil Altman, will you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please? Yes. Stand, please. Flags over here. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. George Sloan, would you would you come up, please? George Sloan, uh, uh, most of you all know George. I graduated from high school with George. He's my brother. He's also my brother in the Lord. I'm proud to say that. And George has been to our reunion ever since we've been here. And uh, and you all know the ones that come directly know what the song is that he sings. It's a song that that my family and the most of the railroad families. Uh, they want sung at their funeral. It was at my, my father's funeral and many of you in here, the funerals I've been to that, uh, at this song. So, George Sloan. Thank you, Wayne. It's an honor to be part of this reunion. I'm not a railroader, but some of my family is involved with the railroad and I appreciate being part of today. It is a beautiful day, and we are to really be happy. 
Life is like a mountain railroad with an engineer this brave. We must make the run successful from the cradle to the grave. Watch the curve that filled the tunnel. Never fall, there never fail. Keep your high upon the throttle and your eye upon the rail. Blessed say, here thou will guide us till we reach that blissful shore where the angels wait to join us and that pray forevermore. As you roll across the threshold, spanning joy, then swelling tide, you behold the Union Depot and to which your train will glide. There you meet the superintendent, God the Father, God the Son, with a heart a joyful plodding, where we peer from welcome home. Blessed Savior, thou will guide us till we reach that blissful shore where the angels wait to join us and I pray forevermore. Blessed Savior, thou will guide us till we reach that blissful shore where the angels wait to join us and I pray forevermore. Art Ratliff, if you would come, and each year we, we mention those who, that, that Art Ratliff and Jean has been able to, to, over the years, the people that was coming to the reunions that's passed on and going to be with the Lord. And Art, each year, he comes and he reads that list off. It grows longer. And as we look back to even last year and, and, and John Paul Kazee and the year before, Ballard Wright, and I'm not, not picking names out there, just the ones that, that comes off the top of my head, but, but uh, Art Ratner. <clears throat> First of all, I'd like to tell you a little story before I get to the sad part. Once upon a time, there was a lady, she was 80 years old, and she was going to get married her fourth time. And she was interviewed by this uh, news reporter and uh, he asked her, he said, what's your first husband? She said, he was a banker. Who was your second husband? Said, he was a trapeze artist for a circus. Well, said, who was your third husband? Said, <clears throat> he was a doctor. And he said, who was your, who's gonna be your fourth husband? He said, he's an undertaker. Said, can you explain why that they had different occupations? And she said, well, that's easy. He said, one for the money, two for the show, three to get ready, and four to go. <laughs> so, so anyway, uh, the first Shelby reunion was held at Ashland on uh, June the 27th, 1997. And lo and behold, they've been, if my list is correct, and if I mention some, uh, somebody that I don't have, it's because that I couldn't find them on the internet. <laughs> but so far, they've been about 60 people deceased. That's a lot for that many years. And the first thing I have on the list is Jack Benner. Kath, that is Kath Ward-Wells, Avonel Ratliff was my sister, Nana England, 
Leon Huffman, John Coleman, Ed Stone, Raymond Ingram, Etzel Yates, Harry Comer, Vonda Lucas, Tootsie Rowe, Charlie Van Hoos, Billy Music, Roger Music, Peggy Cheek Williamson, Helen Branham, Joanne Wimburn, Rex Yates, Clayton Moore, P.G. Anderson, Ann Clark Orsman, Ruth Moore, Bobby Rowe, Clyde Lucas, Eugene Price, Albert, uh, Alberta Lyons Pleasant, Joyce Clark, Tom Stanley, Don Johnson, that was Virginia Kelly's husband, Vicki Music, Charlie Potter, Nancy Kelly, Betsy Clark Brooks, Betty Clark Brooks, Opal Rutherford, Mary Liz Johnson Green, Audrey Johnson, uh, Doug Pennington, Fulton Meadows, E.H. Thomas, uh, Merlin Sanders Lines, Joyce Ann Hilton, we often know her as Tiny Baby, J.R. Runyon's was Madge Hilton's husband, Pard Craft, Walter Venters, Charlene Coleman, everybody knows her as Miss Charlene, a lot of them went to, here went to school with her, and she always thought Shelby was the best place on this earth. And <clears throat> then there was uh, Carlette Gillum, Jesse Sayers, Murray Gillum, Donnie, J.D. Glenn Sayers, Mary Adkins Coleman, Harry Chuck Johnson, Paul Billiter, Liza Mullins, which was Elmer's wife, Herman Brooks, Elva Johnson Adkins, C.D. Thomas, uh, we all know her as Chick, that was uh, Minnie Marie Comer Rowe. And the last one was my cousin, Madge Hilton Runyon, and then John Paul Kazee. So uh, hopefully that somebody here will be with us next year. It might be me, who knows? But anyway, that's, that's the list. And uh, so I'll turn it back over to Wayne. One of the railroad committee that uh, that worked so hard to put this together, and Ruth and Ruby, you all can keep your seats, but I'll, I'll recognize you all on the committee. But the rest of you stand up, and some of them are not in here. Richard, Jerry Sloan's out there. A lot of them's out there working, but Richard Lowe's here, and uh, Jerry Sloan, if you saw Jerry out there, and uh, we will be honoring some some of the other members on this. But let me say this, we are, we're here by, by the grace of God and by the assistance of Bill Clark and Pam to, give, to help us to give out these scholarships, but, uh, but we're supported by contributions. I give my contribution every year and everybody that uh, wants this reunion to go forward needs to, needs to contribute to this reunion. And we need some more people to get involved. And hopefully by these scholarships we've given out that, that it will help people to get energized and, and want to see this reunion go on for years and years and years and support it financially and to, and to come to the meetings that we have. We don't have, but I think four meetings a year. But uh, this is important to this community in this county. Uh, this uh, reunion was, uh, was declared a few years ago by, by the Pikeville Pike County Tourism Commission as a county festival. And that's helped us tremendously. And we have today Lena, Lena Fay, as we know her, and, and, and Mr. Tackett, uh, the director, is with us here today. So we, we appreciate people that support. This is good for the county. It is good that we uh, were able to work with the Hollis P. Huntington Museum and to get the two tickets a year that we give away at 3 o'clock today, that we will draw a name, and we will give a trip to go from Huntington, West Virginia to Hinton, West Virginia. So it, will, it is a great trip. We got, matter of fact, I found out recently that we have four tickets coming, two that wasn't picked up last year. 
Uh, whoever who won the tickets never did ask for the tickets, so this year they'll be able, and maybe they didn't know or understand, but this year we will have four people from this reunion on that train when it leaves Huntington, and it goes across the New River Bridge. So Pat and I was able to go to Hinton and uh, meet with the mayor and the chairman of this committee. We still haven't given up on the excursion train that we're trying to get from uh, with the Pike County Tourism support and support of our congressmen and senators and the, and the governor of the Commonwealth to get a excursion train put from Iceland to Elkhorn City. We haven't given up on it, folks. We're still working on it. The last session of the Kentucky General Assembly passed a resolution supporting that train, and that was sent to the president uh, of, the, of the railroad. Uh, we have permission from uh, Amtrak to use their equipment. We already have, the lady has said, uh, get the track from the railroad company and, and we, will, we will help you make that a reality. So we not give up on that. So the next we have is, uh, is into our, our Hall of Fame. And I'll do the best I can. It's hard to, it's hard. I give a lot of eulogies at funeral and it's very hard to do that, it's, uh, but I'll be glad today to try to get through this and the families have asked me to, to, uh, to handle it for them, so I'll be glad, glad to do that. So the first one, and what you have the first one? Next one, which way we go? We have a, a beautiful plaque that will that you can give out uh, that will, we we give out this year, and you can. It's very legible if it's light behind it or something white. And the first ones we want to, and when we brought this reunion up here, we and we we had to have help and assistance and people who was dedicated to pull it off. Well, matter of fact, it was two sisters that. Uh, that had been to Iceland for the years. They was uh, children of a, a railroad, railroader from a railroad family. And that was Ruth Jackson, who's here with us today, and Ruby Bevins, and they're, they're seated here with their, their families. And uh, so they, they are the first, and then through the years, that, and I'm gonna read what is on this, and it's very appropriate. Through the years, the two of them have selfishly devoted themselves to the well-being of everyone, their families, their church, their communities, and their railroad families. Their community and their, both served on the Shelby Railroad Union Board with distinction, and both are great railroad cooks. Everybody always looked forward to them uh, bringing what they cooked at home and and we don't only eat here today, we, we eat, and Virgil can vouch for that because he's always asking Pat, now we, what, are you, what are we gonna bring to eat at, at our meeting? So we have made that a tradition that we have something to eat when we have our meetings. But uh, these, these two ladies are truly, truly Shelby heroes and uh, they will go into the Shelby Hall of Fame, which is uh, a board in the Shelbyana Post Office here in Shelbyana, and uh, their picture will be added to that, and uh, we certainly, as a committee, we could not have made it uh, during this time if we hadn't had the dedication of especially these two ladies. And you know, we, we honored Mara Adkins Coleman uh, last year, and, uh, and those are the type of people that made, that made us, made us, made this reunion and we could be here today. So what I want to do is I'll walk down, you all don't have to come up, I'll walk down and present uh, this to Ruth Jackson and Ruby Bevin. Next one is Charlie Potter. 
And uh, I'm going to read this uh, to you, what, what we have, what the committee decided, that, and talk a little bit about Charlie Potter. He was a man of distinction, a loving family man, and a man of high standards and complete integrity. He was a dedicated railroad policeman who was inclined to be extremely cautious in his personal relationship with Pauls to pay our tribute of love and respect and affection and the admiration of his memory. Charlie Potter, when I was growing up, you know, we in this country ended up, our heroes was our sports people in sports in this country. And it seemed like each time that we put them on a pedestal, they fell off. And our young people had no mentors and nobody to look at. When I was growing up, it was people like Charlie Potter, whom I remember, who, who dressed in a suit and a tie every time that I believe I ever seen him. Charlie Potter was good to us, Bill Clark, if you remember, and <laughs> we used to, we was, we was raised in Shelby. So we was walking the track, and at times I'd say we crawled under railroad cars uh, to get over to the big log, the river to go swimming. Charlie would never embarrass us. He respected us so much. He would always call us off to the side and say, now, boys, if you ever see you doing that again, I'm going home and talk to your parents. And he always did that. He had to, but Charlie Potter was special to every railroad man that I knew, every railroader. They had great respect for him. Another thing I remember about Charlie Potter, if you went up Jaeger and looked at his garden, he had a green thumb. And Marie, I, this is the cleanest garden I ever have set my eyes on. I never did see a weed in it. I never did see a, every row was straight. Seemed like every bean had a, something to climb up on. Every tomato was steak. So Charlie Potter was part of us, of all of us, in Shelby and of growing up. And it, it's, it's great that we're, we're able today to come here to memorialize him and to thank his family and the dedication that he had and the love that he had with his family and the love that he had with his railroad family. You know, it's, uh, uh, as you all know, and the jobs that you've had, uh, everybody needs a break in life sometime. Kaminsky, you know that, everybody does. And Charlie would always see that you had one before he had to take drastic action. He did his job, but he did his job with understanding, and he did his job from his heart and not from the book. So, Marie, if you would come forward, I would, I would give you this on behalf of the family, and, and I know that how proud that you was of your dad when you all were growing up and the life that you all had, and you was raised in a Christian home. He certainly was, and that, that means a lot. <laughs> the next one is uh, very special to me. And, uh, And then growing up in life, you, you know, you have families and you have, have, have uh, uncles and aunts and you, you love them all, you like them all. But uh, as life is, you have somebody special that comes into your, to your life. And I was able to, in, in my life, to, to, to have an uncle that uh, that became my mentor. Um, the whole time, the whole time that I was growing up. The first car I ever had, Kaminsky, he, Terrell Coleman, my uncle, uh, asked me, I was working at a Custer's stand, saving my money to hopefully get me a vehicle. 
And Terrell came by one day and said, how much money you got saved? And I said, I believe I got $400. He said, give me the $400 and I'm going to go to Ohio to auction and get you a car. He paid a lot more than $400 for the car that he bid in. And uh, as I got older, he, he, had, he was always there for me. Our, our family was intertwined. Um, Terrell was, and I'm going to read this. Uh, Terrell Coleman loved to ride the rail, and railroad fork horn was his favorite thing. He was at peace when he was around his railroad buddy. A successful businessman, he kept his rights for years so he could mark up and work a few days each year. He served his, country, his county on boards and commissions, and I remember he was on the first county airport board, and he was on the first county housing authority. But, but as, as he was successful in business and he financially supported and sponsored community programs and projects. And you, you all live here and remember that Coleman Oil on Thanksgiving always fed people that had, had no way to feed themselves on Thanksgiving at the Pikeville Elementary School. But I can remember being in Terrell's office when he was down next to Kelly's drive-in and his CPA brought him in his taxes, and Pearl said, you're supposed to have them four days ago to me, and now you've got the deadline, you have to get them to the post office and get them in. And his CPA said, I've been looking for loopholes, and I've saved you a large amount of money. Of which Terrell Coleman responded with this, uh, the Lord made it possible for me to make money. I love this country, I serve my country, uh, when, uh, when I was called, and I want to pay my taxes. Now you get me an extension, and I don't want any loopholes. I want to pay because the Lord has been good to me. Uh, he told his CPA that in my presence. So he loved this country. He was a family man. Uh, Ruby is here today, and Gary, and Eddie, and Teresa, of course, lives in Florida. But, uh, but it, it had been a blessing to me, as I said, in my public career, Terrell always uh, supported me. I traveled with him. I've had the opportunity to, uh, from Bangor, Maine, to Seattle, Washington. Uh, my first trip I took on a recruiting trip to California with, uh, with later Governor Paul Patton, who was chairman of the Industrial Commission here and the late Marzella May, who was state representative. We was in California uh, uh, trying, to, trying to get a Rockwell International to locate in Pike County. Terrell was, with, he was on the Industrial Commission too, and he was, uh, he was always available. The first trip I made to Washington, D.C. to see our congressmen and United States senators, Terrell accompanied me to Washington. So. So in, uh, it, it was a great loss to the, our family when Terrell passed away, but it's a great loss to this county because of what he contributed to it. So I would like for Eddie and Ruby and Gary to come forth and I'd like to present this to them in, in, on behalf of our railroad reunion. Now this other fellow that I'm going to talk about today that we want to go into the Hall of Fame. Um, as again, as, as we moved up here from Ashland and we got started, uh, we had a lot of interest but not a lot of workers. So over the years, we could not have put this on if it wasn't for this fellow. I saw him when he didn't feel good, when he felt bad at some years that we had it. I watched him 
go beyond what I thought an average person ought to go through in one day. And that, that's Richard Lowe. Uh, that, uh, Richard attends every meeting and he works. And I want to read this. Richard Lowe, he loves the railroad, railroaders' families, and the Shelby Railroad reunion. And that's true. He dedicated to this reunion. He has never dodged a responsibility to help plan and set up. If there was just a few people to help, he was always there. He believes in the reunion with his heart and soul. Without his dedication and hard work, we could, could not have had this reunion. So, Richard, we appreciate you as members of this uh, railroad committee and uh, ask you to and come forward and, and accept this. We've got one more of a fellow who works with us uh, uh, every year and who, who has to every year anything needs to be done, he's always saying, I'll get it done. Seem like it's magic. And he, he's not in the best health, as you all that know him, but one of the hardest workers I've ever known. We, we got cookbooks to raise money to help this reunion. Ben, come on up here to me with me. I want to, I'm, I'm talking about you, and I don't want to talk about you unless you're standing right here. <laughs> this, this fellow right here, since we, we brought this reunion up here, and we, we got cookbooks to try to raise money for this reunion. And this fellow here knocked on my door twice. <laughs> I don't know how many doors he, barked, he knocked on. So more cookbooks, he ought to have a, a national award on cookbooks. I mean, he got and knocking on everybody's door and saying, you gotta have this cook, this railroad, they're the best cooks in the world, and you gotta have this. So what the committee wanted to do for you today is to recognize your hard work that you do for this reunion, and we have to pre present to you, and I wanna, I wanna read this, and this is certainly how this committee has felt. Uh, 15th Annual Shelby Railroad Reunion honors Ben Blackman, Shelby Railroad Reunion Man of the Decade. Ben Blackman is industrious, self sacrificing has unlimited energy and a gentle personality. He has always taken on hard, hard jobs if work needs to be done. And we, we appreciate you so much. Again, and I said that we are, we're, we're blessed for Bill Clark and Pam Kirk and that family to assist us in regard to giving scholarships out to railroad connected seniors in high school. Virgil Osborne is chairman of that committee. He is chairman of the committee that, um, and it's not an easy job. I think we got eight this year. We had three scholarships to give out. And uh, we as a committee, uh, we, Virgil goes through the counselors at the schools and they are, they're given all the information. And then they write an essay and they tell us their connection to the railroad family. And then they tell us what they've contributed while they've been in high school. And they, then they tell us their goals. We also are considered, we consider, the committee has, is the need. And I, you know that if you have a, a child that makes, and we had one, I think made 4.6, I didn't even think you just went up to four, Mike, but I found out you can go to four, three, four, six, right on. So, uh, but those people get 100% scholarships. So we try to take that in consideration and we do look at their, we look at their record while they was in high school. I'm talking about from the time they was a freshman till the time they graduate. But Virgil Osborne has taken this on, and, and Virgil, it's, uh, if, if you will come forward, we will, we will go ahead and, and let you present these uh, to these 
students or their families, ever who's representing them today. And uh, Virgil, we want to thank you for the job you do with the committee. We couldn't have made it. And you've got to remember, Virgil's connection with this is Ann, his wife, who absolutely loves Shelby. You could never have a conversation with Ann that she didn't talk to you about Shelby. Never, ever, no matter where you was or what it was about. Virgil Austin. Thank you, Judge. Good morning, folks. It's, I think it's still morning. He told me not to talk long. <laughs> Said he wasn't going to. Uh, but I personally want to uh, again thank Bill Clark and his daughter Pam for their generosity and providing the funds to aid and assist the children of people associated with railroad work over the years. And uh, we've been doing this now for several years and each year it's getting a little bit bigger. Uh, it is a tough job to decide because all of them are worthy. All of them should have it. But you've just got a limited amount of dollars and you have to make a decision. And this year was the easiest one for me because I, re I, re uh, uh, I refused to serve on it because I had a granddaughter that was a senior <clears throat> over at Pike Central. And I refused to uh, cast a vote in it, so it was done by other members. I want to read you a brief thing about a message from the Clark family about this scholarship. The Joyce Charles Clark Scholarship gives railroad connected children a running start for college. It brings power of knowledge to these young people. It brings them to an atmosphere of opportunity and lets them stay and build their lives, hopefully here in Pike County. God has blessed us. So our prayer is that each one of the recipients will study hard and trust in God. Uh, that's their family prayer for the recipients of of this year's award. This time we had eight applications and we had to divide the money up a little bit in order to stretch it to get three winners. And we did get three winners. Um, they are here with us today. Uh, the ones that did not win, as I said and I heard the judge allude to, uh, most of them will definitely receive academic uh, scholarship because of their standing in their class. A lot of them were valedictorians and number one in their class. A lot of them made high scores on ACT, which usually carries with it extra help from a financial standpoint when you go to college or to vocational school. And our winners are allowed to go to either place. Uh, they can uh, continue their education at the vocational school or at college. Uh, we do not give the money out today. We wait until the, the, the winner provides information to us that they have enrolled in a bona fide college or vocational school and have incurred indebtedness to go to college. Then we give them the scholarship. Now in case one of our three winners does not go, then we have chosen two alternates. And a first alternate and a second alternate. So if uh, we should have two of them decide that they don't want to go in the fall or that they don't bring us the correct information in a timely manner, then those uh, alternates would receive the scholarship funds. So today it's an honor to recognize three students 
uh, from those eight that we, the committee decided uh, uh, needed uh, and would utilize the scholarship. And I understand they're all going. We have actually one of the recipients here uh, in person today, and I'd like for her to come up and receive the certificate that we give to let them know that they have won uh, the Railroad Reunion, uh, Shelby Anna Railroad Reunion Scholarship. And when she complies with the things in the fall of registering at school, she can bring her information back and we will uh, give her the money. I'd like for her, if she would, uh, to give us just a brief overview of where she plans to go to school and what she plans to pursue as a life's occupation and uh, 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 read her essay. Now, the essay is a key factor in, in the things. It relates to railroad family history and those kinds of things. So, But Sabrina, music, come forward. We'll, we'll just let her tell us a few things about what she plans to do and where she's going to college. And I see she not brought her essay, so I brought one for you. <laughs> just, just in case, uh, Sabrina. Uh, I've got one here somewhere for her. You can turn it over to the essay after you give us a brief synopsis of where you're going. Um, I plan on going to UK in the fall to major in biology, and then after that, plan on going to graduate school to become a pharmacist, hopefully, yeah. And uh, I'm. Hopefully my, my long-term goals are after becoming a pharmacist to possibly open up my own pharmacy somewhere if, ever, if, if everything goes as planned. And um, actually this summer I'm, uh, I'm heading to Europe today for a, an honor band that I was chosen to play in and we're going to Europe to uh, tour to 10 different countries for 17 days to uh, just play different concerts for different countries. And it's gonna be wild. And, uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll read you my essay then. Okay. The railroads have always, and in my opinion, always will be a major part of industrial America. Trains provide transportation for not only people, but for also for all different kinds of goods. It gets the goods of consumers in, parts of, uh, in different parts of the country. Railroad transport goods to rural areas and cities. They are such an industry that not only do they provide getting people and goods to the destination, but do in such a manner that creates many jobs and is done in such an organized, timely, and efficient way. Living in an area such as Eastern Kentucky that has so, many, so much to do with the mining of coal, the railroads are extremely important in the transportation of that coal from here to places all around America. It is a huge financial factor in the Eastern Kentucky economy. Without the railroad and these hardworking men that run them, we couldn't live in the type of community that we live today. I'm happy to say that ever since I was born, the railroad has been a big part of my family. Both my great-grandfather and grandfather made working for the railroads their lifelong career. My great-grandfather, Abraham Lincoln Music, worked as a conductor for the CNO Railroad of Cheviana for well over 35 years. He worked long, hard days and nights to put food on my great-grandmother's table, and his commitment towards the railroad and passion of his work made such an impact on the people around him that his son, Roger Darrell Music the first, also decided to make a commitment to the railroad. He worked as a yard clerk. He called crews into work when the railroad needed them at all hours of the night and day. He worked at the Shelby Yard office doing not only that, but working various other positions for almost 30 years. Being a part of the railroad community, I believe, has made a huge impact on who I am today. I have lived in my house that is located on railroad property for my whole life and believe that this little house on the Noel Road of Shobiana is one place that I will always be able to call home. 
Growing up around here has made my childhood one I'll always look back on and think those were the days. The community I live in is one that I have total respect for. Almost everyone around me is hardworking and caring people. If it wasn't for all the support from the wonderful neighbors that surround me, this place just wouldn't quite be the same. The railroad community is such a tightly knit group of people that it really is more of a family than a community. Always having a place to go, kick your shoes off, and get something to eat is always something to appreciate, especially when it's not even your own house. I couldn't tell you how many of the homes around here that, that I live in that I've walked in, got something to eat, was treated like I lived there, like a part of their own family. I believe that the railroads being that common factor in all both mine and my neighbor's lives is one that brings us all so close together. It's one thing we call all either that we call either thank you for putting the food on our tables or gripe about for not. All jokes aside, the railroad, the railroad community, and the jobs it's provided for not only our families now, but for also for our families past, we owe most of the things we have. Personally, living on the railroad property, having my beautiful home on it, and all the amazing memories that go with it are worth so much more than just money. Peace of mind is priceless. With Sabrina today is her mother and father, Mr. Roger D. Music II, and Kimberly Mullins. Oh, Ken, would you stand up, please? With <laughs> most of you railroaders I know know Roger. Our second recipient is Destiny Shea Hamilton. Destiny um, is a student. Uh, did I say where you're from, a student up Shelby, Shelby Valley? You're from what? Shelby Valley. Shelby Valley. She's from Shelby Valley High School. And Destiny Shea Hamilton is a student at Pike Central High School. Destiny Shea is uh, on vacation. But we have. Uh, a mother? Grandmother. I said mother because she doesn't look old enough to be a grandmother. But she is going to accept uh, uh, Destiny Shea's certificate. And if you wish, you can read her. Come on up. Uh, Let's hold this so they can get a view of it back there. Here's Destiny's. I'm Neva Jo Kennedy. I'm Destiny Hamilton's grandmother. While she's enjoying vacation on the beach, then I will read her uh, report that she gave. She plans to go in uh, to Big Sandy Technical College uh, this coming fall. She's already registered. Uh, she really hasn't decided what she's going into. She wants to go into commercial education or she wants to become a drug rep. As you know, CSX is a leading supplier of the rail-based freight transportation in North America. Their involvement with companies is helping to protest a prosperous future for all of us. They have a very superb safety performance rating of the trains and tracks. They also are concerned with the safety of our communities that they serve. In my opinion, CSX has proven to be a great railroad community family. I have many family members with experience in working for CSX. My great-great-great-grandfather, Lee Clark, worked for over 30 years on the railroad, although I didn't get the opportunity to have the pleasure of meeting him. I do know he supported his family with the help of the railroad. My great-great-grandfather, James W. Hamilton, worked for the railroad for over 50 years. 
He was the yard master for most of his years. With him being in charge, I know the railroad had a huge impact on my family. My grandfather, Jimmy Hamilton, has worked for the railroad for 38 years, from 1973 to this year. My greatest <clears throat> to receive an associate degree in arts. After that, I plan to attend university and receive a four-year degree in communications. It is with great pride I am an applicant to receive the President's scholarship. It would mean so much to me and my family for you to consider choosing me. I want to have an opportunity to see, succeed like my family members that were a part of the railroad has. However, the applicant who receives this award, it will be far greatly appreciated. The third recipient is my granddaughter. She's not here today because she had oral surgery yesterday. They removed uh, surgically three wisdom teeth and whatever goes with that. Uh, I talked to my youngest son, which is her father last night. They had her on some pretty strong medication and. Uh, and I asked him all the other things that goes with it, and he said that she looked like she had a boiled egg in each jaw. <laughs> it was swollen out so much. Uh, but she did write uh, uh, a note for me to read, if I can find it. Uh, to the Shelby Anna Railroad Reunion Scholarship Committee. It is with regret that I must inform you that I'll be unable to be present at the scholarship presentation at the reunion. I certainly wish I could be present because the reason I can't is a painful one to me. I have to have a oral surgery to remove some wisdom teeth, and it worked out to be three of them. Uh, and that was done yesterday. I tried to get it postponed, but could not get it rescheduled before freshman orientation at the college that I planned to attend. And she didn't want to be missing her freshman orientation. I want to thank the committee for selecting me as one of the scholarship recipients. I will do my best to use the scholarship wisely. Lauren Michelle Osborne. Uh, she plans to attend Eastern Kentucky University, and she's looking for some kind of work in the um, medical field. Uh, she's going to try to, uh, her first her first choice was to be a, a physician's assistant. Uh, I'm not sure that, you know, she'll pursue that all the way through. It's a long time. But she is definitely interested in serving people in the medical field. She thinks we owe it to uh, each other to take the best care we can of our folks. And I'd like to read, if I may, her essay. Uh, as the judge told you about her grandmother, Ann Clark, uh, and that's why I'm on this committee is through Ann. Uh, I didn't work on the railroad either. Uh, sort of like my brother, he said he was going to go down and apply for black lung. Well, I said, Burl, you never did work on in the mines. Uh, he said, oh yeah, but said, I knocked off a lot of coal as the train went by. <laughs> you know what I mean when I say knock off a lot of coal, you guys? 
take a big pole and reach up there and scrape along the gods as it goes by and get to net to, for firewood. My name is Lauren McKenzie Maggie Osborne and I'm applying for the Joyce Charles Clark Scholarship. My knowledge of the railroad and its importance began with my grandmother, Ann Clark Osborne. I call her nanny. Let me tell you how it all started. Growing up, I was faced with the challenges of being brought up in a family where my parents were divorced. When me and my brother were still young, it wasn't easy growing up in a divided family. Each parent had 50% custody. Each week, my brother and I would move from one parent to another. This went on for about five years. During this period, my nanny Ann would stay with us every day and night that my daddy had custody of us. My interest in train started with my nanny Ann. One day we were sitting on the back porch at my dad's home at Coal Run Village, and we heard the trains moving in and out of the siding across the river from our house. That started her telling us railroad stories. My nanny Ann grew up in what was and still may be called Back Bottom at Shelby Anna. During her growing up, the Shelby Anna yard was big and had a lot of trains coming and going. She would take us up to Shelby Anna to show us where she and her family lived and the big yard and the buildings that were still there. She showed us pictures of those huge steam puffing locomotives that were massive but beautiful. One day we got to climb up in an old abandoned caboose that was parked on a siding in front of where she used to live. That was really a fun and a new experience for me and my brother. My nanny Ann could talk forever about Shelby Anna, the trains and yards and especially the people. She said it was the best place in the country to grow up. Because everyone looked after every child like they were their own. Most of the though, she talked about the family making a good living by working on the railroad. She told us about her dad, which is my great grandfather, Lee Clark. He spent most of his adult life working on the railroad. My great-grandfather was an engineer. She told us about her brother, Jimmy Clark, who was working on the railroad when he had an accident that later took his life. I remember tears coming to her eyes when she was telling us. My nanny Ann had four sisters, all but one, and her married a man who worked on the railroad. In addition to Lee and Jimmy Clark, the men that contributed greatly to the Lee and Nora Clark family being, in my view, a real railroad family, were sons-in-law Herman Brooks, who worked many years, more than 30, on the railroad. Willis Kirk worked many years, and Ralph Taylor, who worked at least 15 years. These gentlemen were all my great uncles-in-law. As you can tell, the railroad wasn't just a job site, it was a way of life. My great-grandfather Lee and my great-uncle Jimmy worked most, if not all the time, for the C&O Railroad. Some of my great uncles in law worked for both the CNO and the CSX. After five years of 50% custody, my mother was awarded full custody. 
We moved from Pike County to South Carolina, but I didn't forget about my Nanny Ann train stories. It so happened that we lived pretty close to a railroad. I don't know if it was either the CNO or the CSX, but it had big diesel trains. Some of my friends liked trains also, but our parents wouldn't let us get near the tracks, of course, when it was time for a train. We would want, uh, round up some coins, mostly pennies, and place them on the tracks before the train came and go back and get them after it was gone. Sure enough, the train would do its magic. Those pennies were thinner than a piece of paper. We thought it was amazing. Years ago, the railroad was the way of travel and an improved way to get people and goods from one place to another. Much like planes that we consider planes do today. Now planes gets us where we need to go at a faster speed and back. That is how people thought of trains back then. With all the advancements in technology today, we don't see trains the same as people once did. Yes, they are still a major part of travel and transportation. But today, the old steam pumping engine has evolved into the diesel and electric trains and who knows what the future holds. As I continue to grow older and learn more about the railroad, I hope to one day share the stories that my nanny Ann Clark Osborne once told me with my children. I want them to know where we came from as a family and how the past was important to where we are today. If my nanny were a lot, if my nanny were alive today, I would thank her for helping me grow into who I am and tell her that I'm proud she took the time to tell and show me who my family was and what they did with their lives. Before I end, I must tell you that Nanny Ann didn't have, uh, didn't love those trains all the time. You see, my grandfather Virgil Osborne was dating Nanny Ann and sometimes the trains would keep him sitting at the tracks for 30 or more minutes before he could get to her house. <laughs> she didn't like that, but loved it if it happened to be when he was bringing her home. <laughs> Thank you for considering my application. Bill Clark, would you stand up and uh, just give Bill Clark and his family a hand? <laughs> and I don't have to say any more because you all heard it and you understand why we're all here today. So just be gracious in your contributions and and some of you join the committee and help us. And let's, uh, let's carry this reunion on so that we'll be able to hear the kind of stories we've heard today. Uh, I want to thank everybody and, and I want to get the food food blessed. And uh, we're, we're, we're about on schedule. We said we were going to eat 12.15. So you've helped me and I appreciate that. Uh, Melvin May, Reverend Melvin May of the Shelby Methodist Church, where Pat and I attend church, if you'd come and 
bless the food and we will we'll go out and we will talk about the memories we built together as we were growing up and, and uh, eat some of the best railroad cooking that's, uh, that's around. Thank you, Wayne. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time of reunion, this time of wonderful memories, this time to renew old friendships. And we thank you, Lord, for the hands that prepared the food and for those of us who will partake of it. I ask you now, Lord, to bless this afternoon that can be a time of joy and laughter and remembrance. In Jesus' name, we praise you and we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's eat. Thank you. You all need to, to look at Gary Justice's display of Shelby to bring back a lot of memories to you. Those who attended the school, he has a replica. <clears throat> Ever Young and uh, his family who comes every year with their display. He is the editor, he is the field editor of the historical uh, uh, CNO Historical Museum in Richmond, Virginia in their publication. And uh, he has a display out in the lobby uh, and, uh, and Audie Ratliff brought some of his, uh, uh, his pictures of the past. So thank those people for their, what, they, what they do for this uh, reunion and uh, let's go eat and fellowship. And we have Dr. We have Dr. Terry Comer with us again this year who wrote the song, Shelby Anna. He will be singing that song for you. And uh, he, uh, we have Blackberry Jam with us again this year, a, a, a well-known bluegrass band from over in the Pond Creek area of the county. So it is, uh, it is we are certainly, certainly glad to have you all, certainly glad that we're, we're able to have this again this year. And uh, Terry, Dr. Terry Comer has a CD for sale today if anybody wants one of the CD that he has, which Shelby Anna's on it. If you noticed, we have television with us today. We have a public uh, television station now in Pike County. It is Pike TV, Channel 99. It's on, uh, it's on all of your all's television sets. Those of you are on satellite, you're going to be able to get it in about a month. We'll be on the satellite. Uh, my daughter watches what's going on on Channel 99 on her computer in Georgetown, Kentucky. So you at Shelbyville, you'll be able to watch what's going on in Pike County. So all of you that's from other areas, you'll be able to get this Channel 99 on your, on your computer if you want to know what's going on in the, in the great county of Pike. Uh, that channel is, is sponsored by Pike County and by the city of Pikeville and Pikeville College. So it is, uh, the purpose of it is to make Pike County transparent and to let people know what a great county we have so they can be proud of it. So let's go eat. Thank you all.